Yeah, so I, I started teaching tennis when I was like 13 years old. So I had a lot of experience with, um, you know, being on the court with all kinds of groups, young kids and even adults. A uh, town I grew up in, Youngstown, my coach, Keith Venz, he quickly got me involved in working with his, you know, tennis program because I got pretty good. And um, it was just kind of a new way to, for me to get involved with the game and kind of learn. So he, uh, he had me work with him from a really young age. And when I went to college, I kind of, you know, had thoughts of maybe playing some pro tennis when I realized that that wasn't going to work out. Um, quickly, I just, you know, decided it was time for me to go to grad school and uh, really take my, um, take my academics very seriously. Uh, I did a full-time MBA and uh, finished that in 2008. And um, I had a job offer from, uh, from a, very big privately held construction management company but as a lot of people know in 2008 it was the you know, economy completely tanked and uh, that's kind of where I said thank god I had tennis um, so I started looking into tennis jobs and while I was doing my MBA I actually helped coach uh, the Citadel and uh, that was in South Carolina we had a ton of success and I had so much fun uh, working with the players and so I said, hey, look, and you know, while the economy turns around, why wouldn't I just stay in coaching? And um, I remember at first I didn't get an interview. Uh, I know they interviewed three people here before me. Uh, that chip will never, that chip will never leave my shoulder. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, I guess the interviews didn't go as well and, and they invited me back. And um, I don't know, I visited campus. It was kind of the first time I'd ever been to this area of Cleveland. I grew up in Youngstown, which is only an hour and a half away, but I'd never really been here. And I thought, oh my gosh, this place is amazing. Academics are amazing. And they were really bad at tennis. So I figured, you know, what better way to, to start it up and build this program up from where it was. And, um, you know, I just, I've enjoyed it so much. It's, I think, 13th year now. I, I haven't even thought twice about going into business or doing anything else. Cause it's just been so fun. And it's just been awesome working with the athletes here. Yeah, my favorite memory in general, you know, is just the practices. We, I love our practices. I, I just, if I think back, if I ever didn't have this in my life, um, which COVID really did a great job of letting me know what I truly appreciate. Um, the matches are great and I love the matches. I love competing, but we compete so hard in our practices and we work so hard in our practices. I, I just, That'll be the number one thing. If I ever didn't have it, I would miss the most. Um, but the one standout memory, I know we won a national championship last year, and I hate to take away from Matt and James, but the first national championship we won in 2014 is by far and away my favorite memory because it was just a really magical year. Like it, it involved a few guys that were the first real recruiting class that I ever had here. Um, and a team that advanced to the Elite Eight. And uh, in that year, 2014 was just, you know, I got engaged that year, um, you know, got married shortly after that, won a national championship. It just, things were like at an all time high at that point. And um, we've been hunting down that feeling ever since um, and winning the individual national championship was a lot of fun and it was great, but this team is really, really hungry to get that moment as a team you know, together. So, um, so yeah, I mean, there's plenty of them generally practices, specifically the 2014 national championship. Uh, that's an easy one I mentioned earlier in this interview. Uh, Keith Benz was my coach growing up and my coach Keith, he had a son, Casey. And, uh, when I was a kid, uh, Casey would take me to all the tournaments that I went to, you know, across the country. And I'll, I'll never forget, I tell the story all the time, on my uh, senior year of high school, I was at a huge tournament, it's the Midwest Championships. And um, Casey and I were driving back and I had had a really good tournament. I mean, one of the best tournaments I had played in juniors. And um, Keith had died in a car accident that night when we got back into town. And um, I had, I had not really kind of committed to where I wanted to go for college, but at the time, that's why I went to Toledo, because that's where Casey was. 
And, um, you know, I call Casey my brother because I grew up with him and I spent all my time with him in my formative years. And, um, you know, so it's basically Keith and Casey, the father and the son that taught me so much about life, you know, not just tennis, but how everything works. And uh, to this day, you know, I talk to my brother every day and he's got three little kids that are out growing up playing tennis. And um, we actually just texted this morning. His daughter is, she's up to top five in the Midwest section. And uh, so we're really pumped about that. But uh, yeah, ne never, never a doubt. He, he was the best man at my wedding. He's my best friend, he's my brother. Um, you know, we'll be bonded for life. You know, of course, just trying to live on the memory of his dad and, and our coach. Yeah, I feel like an old man answering this question, you know, on my uh, soapbox about how kids can't get off social media and, you know, how everything's changed. But it is true. I mean, one thing I, I loved about being at Ohio State, you know, Tressel was the coach there and he was really big on dual sport athletes. And, Urban Meyer is the same thing. He was really big on dual sport athletes. Uh, personally, I mean, I'm in my high school's athletic hall of fame for soccer and tennis because I played, I played varsity soccer for four years while I was playing tennis, and I only played tennis once a week during soccer season, and that was like a two and a half, three month stretch. Nowadays, you think of a kid playing competitive sports leaving that competitive sport for three months. It's you know kind of hard to imagine. Um, so I do think it's changed in that people really, really, really go all in on one sport uh, more so now than they did in the past. But that doesn't stop me from recruiting uh, a lot of underranked players that maybe play a different sport or or involved in multiple uh, athletics. Uh, and I do think that social media has kind of changed things. There's so much more information and so much more data out there. Um, it seems like more of a highlight world that we live in rather than uh, the, the substance of the entire game or match. Um, so I find myself having to work really hard to get our players to not hit the highlight shot and not hit the thing that's going to look great and rather just kind of be more meat and potatoes and, and grind and be very disciplined about they go to, how they go about playing their game. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I definitely am an advocate of you don't need to completely go 100% all in on one sport all the time. Playing other sports will help balance you, um, balance you out as an athlete, balance you out as a person, get you used to working with different people. Um, so that's kind of my take on that. I read that one and I, I, it was hard for me to prepare and, and it's, it's tough, but every single time I think of favorite sports memory, my mind goes back to 2016. And, uh, you know, when, when LeBron hugs Kevin Love underneath the hoop when the Cavs win the championship, I mean, I wasn't there, obviously. It was in Golden State, but I was at one of the uh, home games uh, for that series. And I was also at one of the World Series games when we lost to the Cubs in, in Game 7. I was actually outside of the stadium uh, during Game 7 when Rajay Davis hit the home run uh, to, to tie the game up. You know, and, and everybody just went went crazy. I mean, I, you were outside the stadium and we were watching on the Jumbotron and the home run happened and the stadium erupted, but it hadn't happened on the stream yet. So everybody was kind of looking around like, what, w wait, did something happen? What happened? And then you see it on the screen and it was just, you know, pe people were like at a whole new level of ecstatic when that when that happened. Um, I was with all my family during the Cavs championship and we were at home watching it, but yeah, the joy of those two moments was certainly something. Um, it's kind of funny, actually, the first time that LeBron left Cleveland and went to Miami, this goes back to my favorite memory at Case. When we won the national championship in 2014, one of the ESPN websites actually had on there how big of a drought and deficit Cleveland sports were under because the Browns were horrible. The Indians hadn't won a pennant in a long time. And the way that the way that the, the paragraph was written, now that LeBron left, the Cavs are nowhere near winning a championship. And they finished the paragraph by saying, and we know Case Western is not gonna win a national championship anytime soon. And so we literally took a screenshot of that, highlighted it. And within a year, actually in 2014, won that national championship. So it was it was kind of a 
you know, stick it to the ESPN author on that one. But, um, but yeah, since then, that 2016 moment in the NBA Finals, holy cow, that was, I'll never forget that. Oh, that is tough. That's tough. One thing no one knows about me. I'm like an open book, Kevin. This is a tough one. Like I, I, I really, everybody knows what I'm doing at all times. Uh, you know, for me, it's when I wake up till I go to sleep, it's tennis at all times. Sometimes the guys in the team, I think, you know, maybe don't, because I'm really hard on them. I don't really let them have sweets and, and anything unhealthy whenever we're on road trips or matches or anything like that. Um, and I kind of act like I'm, totally against you know vices like like sweets and things like that but in reality i'm like i'm battling with not eating too many sweets like on a daily basis and uh not saying that i fail at it i just i have to fight it like really hard really really hard and i don't ever want to be a hypocrite so i find myself really like forcing myself to kind of say no and whatever even like today we've got this you know lunch in for uh for our department and, and you're filling out the thing and it's like what do you want for lunch and then what kind of cookie and i'm like ah, i can't have a cookie just can't do it you know <laughs> if the guy saw me eating that cookie I'd, I'd be in trouble you know but uh that that's the best i could think of is probably uh probably my battle with the with the sweets